Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here. Today I have two devices from Checkpoint. I have the Quantum Spark 1590 and the Quantum Spark 1600. These are two security gateways from Checkpoint. Thank you Checkpoint for sending me these devices and in the next couple of days or weeks I'm going to create some videos showing you how to do many kind of configurations in these two devices. So today we're just going to do the unboxing and some initial configurations on the 1590 and i'm also going to show you how to use the watchtower application on your phone to connect to the security gateway and get all kind of notifications and many things you need to know about your network so checkpoint is huge in global security or cyber security they've been in the industry for almost 29 years they are really known in large enterprises most of the service providers that i worked for have been using checkpoints for security but checkpoint also has many devices for smb or small and mid-sized businesses like the quantum spark security gateways that i'm talking about today these are high performance integrated security gateways for smbs and by smbs we generally consider an enterprise or a network that has less than 500 subscribers the quantum spark security gateways will give you the comprehensive security you need to protect your network so these are different models of quantum spark security gateways available and if you have threat prevention activated this is the throughput that you get with the 1530 which is the smallest in the line this is good for small offices or even home offices or home networks or you can go up to the 1550 which gives you up to 450 megabit per second of throughput uh, the 1570 up to 500 megabit per second and the 1590 that we have here today will give you up to 660 megabit per second in a quantum spark like this one you get a new generation firewall along with a lot of features like side to side or remote access vpn you get threat mitigation with email security, intrusion prevention, application visibility and control. You get an anti-spam, anti-bot, anti-virus and the sandblast zero day protection. So it's really loaded with features. And as I said, I'm very excited to be sharing with you a lot of videos in the future. And if you like these kind of videos, do not forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss anything. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, I usually start there. So follow me on Instagram to see all the behind the scene and a lot of things that I do in the back end here. So for the unboxing let's start with the 1590 in the box you get the device itself of course the appliance you get a quick start guide and a template that you can use to drill the device i mean to drill for the device to be attached to a wall like this there is a power adapter that i like very much because you can screw it on the back like this so there's no accidental disconnection of this cable you have a usb a to usb c cable some screws and anchors to um, attach your device to the wall a utp cable a pin for sim card removal and we also have lte antennas and wi-fi antennas so today we're going to spend a lot of time on this one here and of course when you look at it you notice these antennas we have six of them the two one in the front are for lte because you can insert up to two sim cards here so you can have two wireless connectivity for internet you can use them for backup or they can be your primary if you want to and then we have four antennas for wi-fi two in the back and one on each side so in the back we have eight ports that can be used for your LAN network or they can be standalone interfaces and the thing that I like about this device is that you can also dedicate this port to your internet connection like if you need WAN 1 and WAN 2 and you don't want to use your DMZ port you can use one of these ports here for internet so we have the eight ports and we have the DMZ interface which has an RJ45 port and an SFP port if you want to use a fiber or copper we also have the one port right next to it and we have the usb 3.0 we also have the usb c for console cable and we also have the reset button up here and below it we have the factory reset button on the side of course i showed you the sim card slot so you can have two sim cards here you need to unscrew it in order to insert your sim card and you can also put an sd card on this side here in the front we have the checkpoint logo and these lights that we turn up when the device is being used so now let's go ahead and do the initial configuration on this quantum spark 1590 and i'm going to show you how easily and how quickly it's going to happen and for that i need two cables the first one is going to my computer that i have right here and the second one is going to my service provider for internet this is connected to my cable modem so i'm going to connect my computer to the port one on the back of the device and I'm going to connect my internet connection to the WAN port 
So in your computer, you need to make sure that you are using DHCP for IP addresses. And for that, you need to go under your network interface card, right click and select properties. This is for Windows. And if you have Mac or anything else, it should be, it might be different. So I am scrolling down to IPv4 and make sure you are set for DHCP so you can obtain an IP automatically from this device. The device is already powered on. So I'm going to check if we have an IP address. I'll do IP config. And yes, we have 192.168.1.40. And this is where we can reach the device to the that one that one. So I'm going to my browser and we'll do 192.168.1.1. And we have the warning. We can proceed. So now we have to the dashboard that is going to help us configure our device. And down here you can see fetch settings from zero touch. Zero touch is the option where your device can fetch the configuration from somewhere in the cloud from the SMP, which is a checkpoint dashboard. So you can register your device there, build the configuration for it. And all you have to do is connect it to the internet and the device will grab the configuration and start running. So you don't have to have a technician on site or someone that's qualified. So anybody can just hook it up and start using it. And that's good if you have a lot of customers or if you have a lot of sites to deploy, you can just configure everything and then ship the device and you do the job just fine. But for today, we're going to do a local configuration. So I'm just going to click next. Here we need to do our admin account and I will just give it my name, Guy, and give it a password. The country I am in, I'll leave it United States and this can stay on. I'll just go next. So now I can set up the day, the time and the time zone. And if I have an NTP server, I can come here and put it in. I don't have one, so I'll just leave it blank. Or I can use um, checkpoints, but today I'm just going to leave it blank. Next. Here I need to give the name to my device. I'll just call it 1590 home. And if I do have a domain name, I can put it here. Otherwise, I'll just skip. And here I have two options for management. I can manage my device locally on this specific appliance, or I can do central management where I have a server from which I'm going to manage multiple other devices. So I'm just going to do local management for today. I think we have a chance to do central management someday. So next we have internet option. It's asking me what kind of connection type we have. And today I have a cable modem, so I'm going to go with DHCP. Or you can have cellular, static IP, PPPoE, and so on. So I'll just leave it at um, DHCP. Or you can set your internet later if you're not ready for that. So I'll just click connect here. And it's configuring when. Now it's acquiring an IP address. Establishing internet connection. Yep, we are connected. You can see the public IP that is being assigned to this device and I'm going to click next. And here I need to set up my LAN ports. These are the ports that we have on the back of the device. I can leave all the eight ports in a single virtual switch where there will be just like a layer two switch. Or if I click here or if I uncheck here, every interface is going to be its own network. So they're going to be layer three interfaces. But for now, I'm just going to do a layer two switch on all of the all of the ports here. And for DHCP, I'm just going to leave it to this regular IP that we already have. And I'll click next. This is where we can configure our wireless network. For now, we have the 1590 home wireless. I can give it any name I want. And here I'm going to set a password. And I'll leave this checked so that the wireless devices can have access to the local network. And this is where we select the band that we want. Is it the 5 gigahertz or 2.4? I'm going to leave it um, at 2.4, mostly for a lot of smart devices. that usually have uh, 2.4 gigahertz. And I click on next. Now it's asking where the admin can connect from. LAN, of course. Trusted wireless, of course. I don't like the VPN option. Maybe later. And internet, no. And here I need to specify where the admin can be launching that connection. For now, let's just do any IP address so we don't have any restriction. So now it's connecting to the checkpoint to activate, I mean, to the checkpoint server to activate the device and grab a license. All right, so now we have a license and we need to wait. So these are all the different features or options or functionalities that I have on this appliance here. I'm going to leave all of them activated, but we have a chance to do a video on um, each of them and see how they work. So now I'm just going to click next. 
All right, so the device is configured. This is just a summary of what we did today and everything looks good. I'm just going to click finish and we are good to go. So next we will go to the dashboard and take a look at it. All right, so this is the dashboard of the device and you can see a lot of system information here and we can have our network activity, the packet rate and the throughput. And I can quickly go down the menu here to show you what we have, but we're going to have a chance to explore this further later. So we have the overview under home and we can do monitoring here or troubleshooting with some tools. Next device, we have a network where we have all the network configuration, system, certificates, and advanced configuration for the device. Access policy, we have firewall access policy, user awareness, QoS, and SSL inspection. Under threat protection, we have threat protection, protections, IPS protections, and anti-spam, and so on. And under VPN, we can do remote access VPN or site-to-site -site VPN, and we can set certificates for VPN connections. And we can also manage users under users and objects where we have user management and network resources. Under logs and monitoring, we have logs, status, and diagnostics. We can see here that some sessions are being dropped by the firewall, so it's doing its job already. And let's go back here and I'm going to show you how you can configure your Watchtower application so you can have everything from your firewall on your mobile application. So to do that, first I have an Android phone here. It's the same with iPhone as well. So I need to go under Google Play and look up Watchtower. So it's the second one here and I'm going to install it. Meanwhile, I can go on my dashboard and click on pair your mobile device and here i need to select what administrator i want to create this for so i'm going to select the only one that i have now and click generate it's going to ask me if i'm really sure that i want to bring all my information from the firewall to the mobile app for management and i'll just say yes so from here we can open the application watchtower and you can scroll through all of this if you want to and then click done. You need to have an account. So if you don't have an account, you can sign up here by filling out your username and uh, I mean your full name and email address. But I already have an account, so I'll just go login and insert my credentials. Okay, it's loading here and it's asking me if I want to activate Touch ID so I can log in with my fingerprint. I'm okay with that. And I'm ready to add a gateway on my phone. And if we go back to the dashboard, we already have a QR code generated for us. So I can just click on add gateway and allow this app to use my camera. So I can go and scan the QR code. Yep, I have the name of the device here, 1590 home, and I need to insert the admin password that I have set on the device. And after that, I'll click connect. All right, so now we have the application loaded. If I click on internet, I can see all my internet detail, or if I have any VPN tunnel, I can see here and also see VPN users that I have currently on. And if I go back, I can click here to see all the security updates that I have on my device. I don't have anything so far. Oh yeah, I have some uh, antivirus and other updates available. I can go and click on protected devices to see what devices I do have now online in my network. And currently I just see my desktop and this IP here, which is looks like my default gateway for my internet connection. And I can go under malware events. And if I have any malware event or any threat or things like that, it's going to show up here. And going back to home events, will show you all the security events that you have on your network we don't have any so far statistics we don't have anything i think because it just came online and under settings we can see all the notifications the details about the device the administrators wireless network local networks internet connections vpn tunnels remote users i mean remote access users and all of that or we can go here and if we have many gateways that are connected 
we can see a list of all the gateways here but right now we just uh, we just have one so the app is very convenient for the management of your device or devices if you have many of them and yeah that's how you do it that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like the video don't forget to like it on youtube and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any coming videos and follow me on instagram to see all the behind the scenes and things that i do in the back end and if you have any comments or any questions leave it in the comment section and i'll see you in the next one take care and bye